Hello, today I'm going to take some holly cuttings and make an evergreen holly hedge. Welcome back to Mark's Garden UK at Rose Cottage near Nantwich in Cheshire. And the purpose behind this is part of that overall plan I've got, which is to divide my whole garden into a series of rooms. So I'm going to create a hedge which runs all along this line here, which I've marked out with string. And I've given a really good mow with the mower. Holly cuttings are going straight into the earth. It's mid-October, which means that the ground is still relatively warm, but the air is cooling. So things are stopping growing, but roots will continue to grow under the ground whilst the soil remains warm. And similarly, in the springtime, when the earth warms up, those roots will become more established and eventually we'll see new growth above the ground. So my holly hedge is to divide off this whole space here because I've got an idea for this space, which is to create a very formal real garden up this central axis with a formal planting on either side. The reason I'm doing that is the kitchen window is right behind the camera where you are. So I'll be able to look out of the, cam the kitchen window straight through this garden and it will be divided off from the rest of the garden by a holly hedge. Let me show you some of the things I've got in readiness over here to perform the task. Now, as you can see, I've got two trucks here, both containing water. One is to put the cuttings directly into as I take them off the hedge, the holly bush in the corner of my garden. The other is to transfer them to after I've processed them because I'm going to set up a little production line. I need about 150 cuttings, so I'll put them all in there. Then as I prepare them, and you'll see that in a moment, I'll place them into here before I plant them directly into the ground. So, two trugs, a spade, which is for carving out a little niche for putting the cuttings into. Obviously my secateurs, some rooting powder and a shallow bowl. I've got my thorn proof rose gardening gloves and I've also got a very sharp craft knife. I've used a hammer to put some stakes into the ground to which I've attached two pieces of string in parallel lines. I'm going to do a double hedge so that it's thicker when it eventually matures. And I've cut the grass as short as I possibly can so that there's no competition. And I've got about 200 of these slates in my compound, so I'm going to use those around each cutting as a kind of mulch, and that will prevent competition as they start to establish. And eventually, when they're going and growing, I can remove them and put them back in the compound. It would be a shame to waste these lovely slates. Now, I brought my other spade out here. I'm not going to be using that today. And I'll show you why when I start planting the cuttings into the ground. These gloves, this spade and my secateurs are all available through my Amazon links. And there's a link to each product in the description box below this video. And full disclosure, if you buy anything through any of my links, I do get paid a commission and I thank you for your support. Long sleeves because we're dealing with prickly hedges and thorns and also if you want to wear some protective glasses. I'm not going to wear protective glasses, but I am going to take extra care around my eyes. The final thing I've done in preparation is I've put a board on my garden table because that's where I'm going to be doing the cutting in a moment and I want to protect the surface of the table. So let's now go and take the cuttings from the bush. Now I've got holly bushes in three corners of my garden. So in the interest of biodiversity, I'll take some from here, some from over there, and some from the third corner. And that way I'll mix the hedge up a bit. I'm also going to put in, for good measure, one or two hawthorn cuttings along the way. That's just for biodiversity, because hawthorn is one of our native hedges. And here is the hedge, which I'm going to take the first batch of cuttings from. Now, clearly, I'm not going to demonstrate me doing 150 holly cuttings while you stand or sit and watch. I'll just do one or two and demonstrate the principle of the thing. And that way you'll be able to replicate it at home. But I will come back at the end when I've got a lovely two neat lines of holly cuttings waiting to spring into life. So basically all I've done is I've just cut a nice long length of holly cutting 
I'm going to remove as many of these little bottom leaves as I want from the bottom and that's just to help it fit into the trug of water. If there were too many side leaves at this point I wouldn't get 150 in that trug. And I'll be showing you how to deal with these cuttings in a moment. Let me just gather a few up. These thorn proof gardening gloves are really good you know. I have transferred some roses with these but these hollies are equally prickly and you can really grab hold of the really sharpest thorns and they have no impact on these wonderful gloves. Anyway, available on the link through my channel of course. Now I am getting deep into the heart of this holly hedge, sometimes into the hardwood last year's growth which is not a problem when you're taking hardwood holly cuttings but sometimes these little secateurs just don't cut it quite literally so I've also brought with me a pair of mini loppers and they will do the job slightly better don't worry about damaging the cut because we'll be doing some preparation on these in a moment but anyway you can always use your small secateurs just just take off a few of these excess leaves before you plunge them into the trug down here with all the others waiting in the wings and you will see in a moment that I'm actually going to deliberately damage some of these cuttings for a very specific reason but I'll show you that when we go over to the preparation table in a moment I'm now doing these in little batches after a little time and motion study in my head and I've worked out that if I do five at a time it's a little bit quicker to get them into the trug. The trug of course is to stop them from dehydrating too much before we get them into the ground and removing a lot of the excess leaves as you can see I'm doing here will also prevent them from transpiring too much. Transpiring effectively means losing water through the leaf surface so by removing leaves you are reducing that directly and this is a win-win-win for me because number one I'm getting my hedge trimmed in the process number two I'm getting a new free holly hedge and number three I'm saving quite a lot of money because even if you were to buy 150 bare root holly plants you would still be spending about three or four pound per plant I reckon so saving myself about 600 quid and getting a free hedge now I'll just get these into the trug and then we'll go away and demonstrate how to prepare them for planting. I think there's enough here to demonstrate the point. So I'm doing this in the shelter of my exotic tropical courtyard on the way past I picked up the sharp craft knife. I've got my loppers and my secateurs. This is the board I put on top of the table just to protect it. Here are the cuttings straight off the bush and here is the second trug and then we're going from there through processing into there and then we'll go and plant them in the ground. So let's take one of these cuttings and as you can see this is a softwood one but I've also got a selection of hardwood cuttings in here as well. You can tell where the hardwood is because it changes colour and it becomes notably harder. But you can do this with either hardwood or softwood. So again, I'm just going to remove quite a few of the excess branches from here because that will stop it from transpiring. And then I'm going to tear all the other branches down. Don't worry about damage to this stalk because counterintuitively some damage might help it to produce roots and these will be planted quite deep. So I'm going to trim just below a, a leaf node which is where a leaf was coming out so if I just take that there take my loppers and just snip it it's just before a leaf node here and we've got several other leaf nodes along the way I'm going to be dipping that into rooting hormone powder in a moment but we'll do that when we start putting them in the ground but for now here's another little thing which I've learned YouTube was my friend and I did some research. This is a little craft knife which I bought and what you're supposed to do is just very very carefully 
scar the edge of the cutting and by doing that apparently it will create calluses along that scar and that will cause it to produce more roots. Now I'm going to do more than I need and that way I've got an insurance policy if some of them don't take. But hopefully over the course of the winter these will produce some lovely new roots and then in the springtime I notice some fresh growth at the top. So once again just below a leaf node which is where the leaves were growing out. And I will scar the very bottom end. Can you see there with a very sharp knife. Be careful with the sharp knife obviously. So I'll go ahead now and do 10 of these and then we'll go and plant them in the ground. I'll show you that in a moment. And it's absolutely blowing a gale here so I'll try and position myself with my back to the wind so that the wind doesn't disrupt the microphone but here's where we're about to plant the hedge. Here's the cuttings I've already prepared and here's our two pieces of string going parallel down the strip there. Now as I've already mentioned I'm going to be using my long handled iris spade for this as opposed to my flat ended spade and the reason for that is if I try and go into the ground with this spade because it's got a flat end you need more pressure to cut into the grass whereas this one here the long handled iris spade with a lovely pointy bit at the top there so what I can do is I can put it where the string is vertically down with the handle angled away from me and I can cut nicely down into the grass and I want a nice deep cut into the earth using the pointy part of the spade and as you can see there as I wriggle it and manoeuvre it it goes right down deep and that slice there is where I will be planting the cutting and then it really is just a question of getting our hormone rooting powder taking the cutting and there's the the end which has been cut just be, just below a leaf node there and it's been scarred and I shall dip that very gently into the rooting hormone and push it down as deep as I can into there and then stamp it in done the next thing I'm going to do as I've already mentioned is order in order to protect it from competition just place a couple of these slates around each one like that now I'm doing a double row so I can put my spade in the ground here and the reason I'm doing a double row is because I want a nice thick dense hedge now if I wanted to I could put two in each hole but for now I'm just going to put one in there's the cutting dip it in the hormone push it down as deep as I can and then stamp it in and a slate on either side Those slates are to suppress the grass and it will also guide the moisture, the rainwater down into this crack here, which will feed the cutting. And I will offset these diagonally as I go along the line until eventually I've got two rows of cuttings. And as I already mentioned, I'm going to insert a few hawthorns along the way, the hedge to my right there is made up partially of holly and partially of hawthorn.
So there you go. In no time at all, really, I've got 10 holly cuttings in two neat lines. I'll continue to do the rest of them all the way through. I might show you a tiny cutaway at the end of the whole thing in place, but hopefully over the next few months, these will put roots in. And then in the springtime, we should see new growth coming from the top of each and every one of these cuttings. What have I got to lose? The hedge needed trimming. I wanted a new holly hedge. So I've used a little bit of the hormone rooting powder and next year I'll have a double sided holly hedge, which will separate off this new formal real garden, which I'm about to create. Now, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you what I do to prepare my exotic tropical border for winter. I'm not going to start preparing it yet because we're still very mild and actually some of those plants are still growing. But in the very near future, as we go from October into November, I will be doing some work on that exotic tropical border and it will involve digging some of those plants up, putting them into winter storage and some of the ones that are left in ground will be mulched very, very thick. So subscribe to my channel if you want to see that hit the notifications bell comment below because it's always good for, to hear from you and if you want to see how this turns out obviously you get a video an update in the spring and see you soon